Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon for uh, UK. Uh, we're going to be in a few moments with Nathaniel C. Schuller um, for this personal uh, personal branding free webinar. Nathaniel Schuller, are you live with us? Hello, Stefan. How are you doing? I'm fine. It's snowy here in Canada. I don't know if you have snow in UK. Not right now. Today was today was a lovely day. Actually, I went for a nice little walk on the uh, on Dartmoor on the moors. And uh, it was it was pretty fantastic, actually. Uh, I was very lucky to uh, have the opportunity to do that. But um, still a bit cold, really, for me. But it's not minus 20, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's talk a little bit about personal branding. Today we are doing a special before the personal branding webinar hosted uh, with uh, Jason Kennigan from the Closing Engine. Today we're going to talk about um, your new venue, because you're in a new place for the, the broadcast. And uh, yeah. we'll touch base with a, a few topics. Oh, nice. Uh, we're going to touch base with a few topics today regarding personal branding and how it, it can affect your, your career and why um, and how you should have that done, you know, because we know plenty of, um, of uh, different industries that are now using personal branding to develop their, um, I would say, exposure and also the way that people are perceiving them. And we will take the example of the uh, Salvation Community Initiative led by Andy Steele, the founder of the Pat Foundation, Plan to Treat Today. But for now, I'm going to leave you uh, the microphone to you and so you can start uh, the, the show. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, uh, we've got some very interesting guests actually coming along over the next next few weeks and months. And, yeah, I mean, Andy Steele is a, is a fantastic individual. He's been involved uh, with charity for, well, I believe, nearly 10 years in conservation. So he knows a lot about the industry. But actually, his personal brand really just stands out. You can you can see his work ethic. You can see, you know, he keeps himself fit. He he. he he really just just works so hard to make a difference and actually just to learn everything about that particular uh, conservation project that he's involved with. And he has a number that he's that he's involved with, which are hugely interesting, quite exciting, actually. But, you know, many people, they speak to me because of my personal brand. And actually, I only really contact them based upon theirs. So it's kind of interesting. Right. Don't you think, Stefan? Yes, I think you're absolutely right with, with that. Um, we had the chance to meet uh, Andy, you know, time ago, and um, and uh, he was, you know, um, trying to understand the whereabouts about personal branding and what were the benefits of doing that. So I think, if I recall correctly, uh, you published for Christmas, you published a book called Cheers to You, right? Is that correct? I did. I did. Yes. And uh, Andy bought bought a copy kindly of uh, of that book and as did quite a few other people. And he he went through it and and he actually did it. And, and it's made a big difference, I think, to to how he perceives himself and also how others perceive him, you know, because it gives you the actual I wouldn't say confidence, but it gives you the it's more like an awareness of your of your skills and, and, and capabilities, really. Yes, and what surprised me the most is that uh, I was like browsing Facebook pages one day, and then I I, I, I fell straight into Andy's uh, live video because you can do live video yourself anytime on Facebook, and he was like, you know, um, asking questions to the audience and friends about how they were perceiving him, um, and. If they had one word or three to define him, what would that be? And he made some posts like that. So uh, it's the first uh, leader uh, that I see on, on Facebook being very genuine and authentic, asking people, what do you think about me? With, with, with no fear at all, you know. <laughs> well, if yeah. you're a man of steel, you don't, you don't fear uh, that much things in life. <laughs> and as a former athlete, and, and rugby man, because he, he, he's done a career in rugby. Um, I don't think, uh, like, you know, exposing yourself to 
danger um, uh, is something that you know reframes you from doing things. And he, he, he sincerely exposed himself, asking for a feedback from the audience, which occurred right now. And he was he was, he was yeah. even more surprised than we were, uh, because we 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 are aware of what personal branding can do for yourself. I mean, your inner self, right? Um, because um, most of the time we think that what we say is what we are, but that's advertisement. And, yeah. and, and to be frank and to be honest, um, I'm not sure this is who we are because who we are is defined by our actions. You know, it's not yeah. only authors uh, and very known authors that are saying that and, and political um, figures. Um, yeah. I, I, I do really think that what makes us a brand is what the other people are seeing in what we do, not what we say. Because what we say yeah. can change every day, right? What we do, well, would be probably repetitive if we're consistent. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but Andy, he, he, he really ruled that. He really mastered that uh, like a champion. And um, and that did good because um, um, he's the the CEO and founder of Plant to Tree Today, the Pat Foundation, uh, a UK based charity that has now offices in Thailand. I, I think it's in Bangkok. Yeah, they do. But 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 actually, they've they've nearly planted uh, a million trees. I was just asking him today about how many trees they've planted. And, and actually it's over, I believe it's, it, it's certainly approaching 920,000 trees, Something. which, is, which is, is very impressive. But what a nice, authentic individual he is. And that, that, that's really just so important, I think. With, with your personal brand, it's like, well, you know, what's, what's the point of, of kind of lying about who you are, you know, how good you are at things? It's like you can, even if you're new in an industry, you can still bring skills that you've learned from past experiences into that industry, right? So it's, as long as you frame those in the right, in the right way and you explain to people that, you know, you're, you're, you're learning and you're new in this industry, then people will buy into you anyway. And providing you you you're authentic, you know. Yes, and um, and this is why I think uh, you know that exercise brought a lot to his new initiative, the Conservation Community Project. Uh, it was about conservation, of course, because the title mentioned it. But um, I was surprised by the speed uh, of and the yes, the speed. And then the, the welcoming of, um, of that initiative by the, the public, because yeah. like in days and not weeks, in days, people started to like it. Former yeah. uh, fan, and fans and followers from the Planter Tree Foundation were, oh, what is this uh, conservation community project? And then they dived yeah. into it. And rapidly, Andy set up two things. Uh, he started to do some research and development uh, to build a crowdfunding um, platform that's going to be released any day now. Uh, so, I think. Yeah, so people can volunteer, they can propagate. And of course, I think everybody in the communities, especially the wildlife animals, would appreciate donations, right? Um, Very much. But, yeah. but he, because he's authentic, because he's taking care of branding and personal branding, because I think it's, you, you can't make, you, you can't se se separate them apart, right? He has been transparent and he's reporting weekly with a conservation community weekly updates about the project. Yeah. We've been witnessing uh, last week, I think. Um, no, that, that was which week, sorry. Um, the Hornbids project in, um, in uh, Chiang Mai district, uh, up north uh, Thailand, up north, uh, you know, you, you need... Prop yeah, very few people know what a hornbill is. It's actually a really pretty bird, and they are... They are um, Rare. Becoming extinct, Rare. you know. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're edging towards extinction. If, 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 like a lot of these species, they need to be um, nurtured, you know. Yeah, but people are sometimes not aware about the pace, 
where no. extinctions of species occurs on Earth. Uh, we are up to 10,000 species that are extinguishing themselves right now. Um, it's, it's amazing. We are still witnessing that even with the ivory regulation and, and, and ban, right, people mm. are still poaching elephants. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and the smugglers, nothing stopped them. So there is an industry, there is a demand behind that, right? Which very is, much so. And I th yeah, very much so. People, but I think, I think people, if, yeah. you have, if you don't have a buyer, you don't have any traffic because there is no market. That's the basic rule yeah. of marketing, you know. Yeah. Uh, but actually, um, people, well, animals are still getting killed. Elephants, uh, jaguars, um, panthers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anywhere. It's not only in Africa. It's everywhere, right? Of course. Um, but Andy's, Andy's personal brand, though, is like many of the people that we've been working with in the last few years, Andy's personal brand is, is very strong, you know. But I think actually having a plan for it is is important because you've kind of got to know where you want to end up haven't you before you before you do anything in in marketing right i mean you you're a very experienced marketer yourself and i've noticed you know i only really connected with you because i looked at your linkedin profile and i looked at it and i and i examined it and i was like hmm, wow that's that's a lot of great experience there that you've you've studied at, at you know not just one top top university but actually three doesn't matter the, the the kind of courses that you've done uh, have been have been maybe some online some there it doesn't do. matter it is about but what you do with it. it it's what you do with it yeah and and anyone can do a to, can do a course right we can all do a course it doesn't it doesn't actually matter um but it's it's what you do it's not about what you say exactly and you know <laughs> Everybody in life has 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 a personal brand, whether they like it or not. And even even like criminals have a personal brand. Like if you if if you if you if you walk down the street and you bump into like um, a gangster, right? You know you know about him from his reputation. So he has a personal brand yeah, but as much as anyone else. You know, I'm not encouraging uh, organized crime here, <laughs> but uh, th those guys they are called by the media the geniuses of crime. Why? Because crime, that's not a hobby or an expensive <laughs> hobby. It's an industry. Whether you're in drugs or, or, or poaching animals, there is a market, right? You have drug people that are consuming narcotics. So this is yeah. why uh, the, 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 you have HBO uh, uh, TV series called Narcos or Narcotics or Drug Lords, etc. This is their personal branding. Why? Not because yeah, they would. Yeah. They, they didn't walk up one day at, at college. Say, "Ha, oh, I'm going to be a drug lord today." Why? Oh, because uh, studying is boring. You know, it's 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 because you're living in in, in a semi poverty, in a in a in a in a system yeah. uh, in, in your country that uh, is going nowhere. You know, doesn't have any mm -hmm. backbone, uh, and uh, that's the crisis. So you you just struggle, and from the uh, from the standpoint and, and scope. Uh, they are not into crime. They are just into a, a business that it has been named criminal by authorities, right? Yeah. And that we're not yeah. in that. But there is a demand. This is why some uh, of us on Earth are becoming, becoming bad people regarding the morals. Um, now, uh, to get back to personal branding, um, about uh, which is about what we do, if we, we want to be sustainable and keep on doing good things in our industries, because you can jump from an industry to another, as far as uh, you're building a plan and, the res and some resources around that plan. This is why uh, I think Andy Steele is a great strategist, because he is thinking about the, the final goal. He keeps his eyes on the price, and after whatever it takes, you know, is going to make it happen. If he need if he needs to go 800 600 100 kilometers up north of Thailand to jump into the jungle with his friends, right? He's going to do it. If he needs to meet some important people from universities, scientists, scholars, he's going to knock at doors, give some phone calls. He's going to take the measure that you know he's doing, like a, with a big D and a big O. Do. Like yeah, I, I'm, exactly. I'm thinking about Nike thing, just do it. Well, 
Andy is just doing it, right? <laughs> and uh, and that's the same with you, Nathaniel. Uh, what strikes me the most every time and every day and every week, when you say you're going to do something, you're doing you're doing the one thing you've said. And what strikes me the most, in addition to that, once it's done, you do not procrastinate. You go, oh, I've done this. Okay, what do I have on my uh, notebook or address book or what was yeah. on my plan? And then you achieve the next step because but the major. But the major problem is, mm -hmm. is people get carried away with their own self-importance, yeah? And, you know, I've, I've, I've coached a lot of people over the years in various different parts of my career in, in, in you know, because I used to teach Tai Chi, right? So I've coached people in, in, in learning Tai Chi, right? But actually, sometimes you learn more from your students and from your um, uh clients right then you actually know already about certain things and 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 actually staying humble is 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 what really makes a good high quality personal brand right like you you know that as well as i do stefan that remaining humble is is what just makes it work you know well and uh, i agree with you about humility but sometimes the humility comes by itself because you don't have the time to look at your belly button and say how good you are uh, you just do what you do the results are there but for you you are on the next step next call next action um yeah and and you don't have the time to to congratulate yourself not really that. no um i think it's when people are saying social media is, is a life size they're right and it depends what kind of branding you're in, in putting in your lifestyle because people are going yeah. for for um for cocktails um networking uh, affiliate marketing it, it depends where they are drifting because at some point people are not realizing they are drifting with their own um mission statement or goal achievement they are just um running in circles and caught by what i call the agenda you have two, two ways to manage your life. Whether you, you dictate the agenda of what to do and you, you are assertive and you keep on doing because you have a plan. That's kind mm -hmm. of Andy mm -hmm. Steele style, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, never, he never gives, uh, you know. He just gets on with it. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. the agenda also, uh, you know, um, instead of asking yourself, what I want to do this week, this month, and this uh, trimester, Let's be serious. That would be very good planning instead of saying, oh, this year or for the past next five years, I'm going to do this or that. Let's go for tomorrow, then the week, then the month, then the, the, the quarter. <laughs> and if we, we rule this, we're good. We're good. Oh, we're very good. much, very much. And not, yeah. and not like I'm looking at an agenda and say, what kind of events do I have around me? What kind of, of, um, of trends is there? Uh, on Twitter or on Facebook or on LinkedIn, and then I'm going to jump in. Because if you mm. do that, you're just an, yet another one, yet another yeah, well, You're being pushed. You're being yeah, pushed, aren't you? Pushed difference. around. Because mm. uh, let me take an example. If you're a realtor and you go to a, 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 a networking um, event mm -hmm. and there is no buyers, no home buyers, no home sellers, only realtors the only thing you're just doing you are just networking with competition yeah well i think that's 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 why research <laughs> comes 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 into everything doesn't it it's so important i mean you know we're we're, we're helping uh andy with with the conservation community right but you know i have a very big interest in charity myself yeah and and i buy i buy the big issue magazine here exactly. yeah um i've been reading about this charity here um i've been i've been reading i've been reading the the national geographic the birth of booze is the history of booze here i know you know a lot about alcohol as well because you were in the in the wine industry in your early career we, we both, but actually that's a common that's a common uh, interest for that we both started it is. with that first very job. much <laughs> very much yeah and that's and, it's very cool. But the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is that is that 
if 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 you want to build a good personal brand around a subject yeah and and around your expertise which is what we all want to do you need to research you need to study and you need to build you need to build your knowledge because sure you what you might want to have a personal brand right people might like you as a person but if you don't know your subject really really well or know your skills know your skill sets yeah you get it you get a struggle really that's that's my attitude around this you know but i think we should take a little break because we're going to jump back on in 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 a minute because i think at half past four we've got dan gold which is half past is it half past 10 your time half past 11 um i think it's gonna be half past four in two minutes <laughs> well that's 10 no half years. three it's half three in two minutes okay so it's in one hour time i think so i need to I, I, i'm pretty sure I am, let me I am, let me i am at 10 28 a.m let's just let's just let me just check i'm just gonna see what dan said to me in a message just uh we'll have a little look and see but dan dan gold and i we we met each other um on social media because we knew a lot of the same people and he's actually moved to canada and he works he works uh yeah it's 4 p.m his time so let me just see uh okay so we're going to speak to him in half an hour all right okay. so i think we take a break for for ah here's jason jason's jumped in he's 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 on time <laughs> we're early oh, wait. that's good that's good but we i was just saying i think we're going to take a break unless you want to carry on jason you you've got some interesting stuff to share so maybe we can do that uh stefan maybe jason and i can have a have a conversation until dan jumps in at, at, in half an hour what do you think Jason, uh, no problem. Um, I'm fine with it as long as we know what we're talking about. <laughs> cool. Personal branding. Personal, guess what? Personal branding. It's like, uh, you know, when you drink coffee and you ask what coffee is made of, mm, probably with coffee, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Personal branding may contain branding. I, I know in, in Great Britain, Nathaniel is <laughs> used to be drinking only tea. <laughs> mm. <laughs> because that's the United Kingdom personal branding, you know. Uh, right. Probably they have coffee uh, <laughs> someplace, but actually you can't beat them with the Darjeeling and all those flavors of tea they have, uh, and they're unbeatable for that. <laughs> that's so, funny. So um, I, I will jump um, aside uh, the show. Uh, I will look for the Dan Gold... Um, um, probably um, handle to see if he's online to invite him in the show. Cool. Right. Unless you guys share the link with uh, him so I can upclick him uh, right away and when it's going to be time to. I can share the link with him, no problem. Because remember, my BBTV can stream for four hours in line with no 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 problem. So yeah. let me let me uh, let me share it with with Dan. So when he's when he's ready, he can he can jump in. He's a very interesting individual, I think. Jason, you're gonna you're gonna like talking to him a lot, I think. Okay. What's his main thing? Dan. Uh, he's marketing marketing communications. Okay. And known him for for a long time, <laughs> and okay. yeah, we we connected because of our personal brands. As, as just as just uh, as I was sending him a message, he was sending me a message. <laughs> I'm wondering if we go through a uh, sample of what you do with me as the example. No problem. So, Would what do you do, cool Jason? Thing to do? <laughs> what do you do? Are we live? Are we live? We are. We're live. I mean, what? So, where I where I start with 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 my clients is I get a piece of paper and I get a Woo! and I get a pen. Okay. okay, no intro. And We're just right into it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in, this is the we zillion. Don't, we don't mess around. Yeah. <laughs> Podcast. We don't mess around. Yeah. Of, and and yeah, that, the piece of paper, the piece of paper. Personal branding webinar. Well, the piece, the piece of paper is really for me so that I yep. can actually make some, make some notes about what you're saying, really. Okay. And, and the most important thing is that I understand really 
what your aspirations are and where you actually want to head yeah mm. so so it's kind of like you know what what hey ingrid how you doing so so it's kind of like you know what are you doing now are you happy with what you're doing now is the first is the first thing so are you happy with what you're doing now jason with what we're doing with the closing engine sure yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, well that's 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 the first step because okay. if you are if you are unhappy with where you are, then it's kind of like, well, do you do you know where you're where you're heading? You know? Okay. And and no, I'm and, kind of cloudy on that. And where where yeah. I am is I'm running the operations of the closing engine and I would like to get to the point, maybe in a year, where that mm -hmm. is um, delegated to somebody else. Okay. So all the all the onboarding and reporting and back of house stuff that we do. Okay. So right. like so, we have tech guys, we have tech guys to run a lot of the tech things, but I still have yeah. to keep my finger on the pulse, or else <laughs> things tend to go squirrely. So yeah, but you're gonna you're gonna need to do that anyway. Right. So so right. Yeah, so, I don't so, want to be trapped there forever, right? In no. that role so, of so COO. What you're Okay, so what you're saying is is that you're wrapped up with things on the inside of the business versus working on the outside. Is that right? For the most part, yeah. I mean, I'm doing some funnel stuff as well, but okay. um, yeah. I mean, I I would say I'm quite split in uh, in tasks. Okay, so I, so I would say it's like seventy five twenty five in versus on. Okay. I think that's that's so seventy five percent of your time is spent doing things that you don't like to do, right? Yeah, or 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 not the highest value things that I could be doing for sure. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Like okay. strategic partnerships and and growing um, sales funnels and things like uh, finding sales trainers that we could partner up with to be affiliates with their program because we like their program and it's a fit with our approach, right? That kind of thing. So expanding okay. revenue streams. Okay. Okay. I mean, keep in mind I mean, we have Jeremy for strategic direction as well. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing is that is that you, because you're in a business, you mm -hmm. have the business brand and then you have your own personal brand. Right. Yeah. And and obviously your personal brand is going to be more powerful. Well, it, it, I'm not going to say more powerful, but it can be more powerful than the business brand. The it really just depends on how long the business has been around yeah. and who knows the business for the business brand, basically. Right. So. Right. So, I mean, for example, you know, I've been I've been working with a with a fantastic lady. It's been about thirty years in interior, oh well, in architecture, in the architectural industry, and mm -hmm. her personal brand is 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 amazing. I mean, some of the experience she's got is absolutely amazing. So she can take that and put that into the business brand, yeah, mm. and then and then she can bring other people into that business brand and use their personal brands. So it just it just really depends on that individual and obviously the brand, right? But first of all, I I if I was working with with you Jason, I would actually put together the what do you do wording first of all. Mm -hmm. So we would we would spend some time and we would create five five amazing statements which which okay. would talk about what you do. And 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 that is actually what you do on a day to day basis that you are passionate about, and also what you want to do. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you can design a personal brand based upon how you want it to shape in the future. You don't you don't have to just do it based upon what you're doing now. Yeah, because you know as well as I do what you focus on expands, right? Mm -hmm. So so the more you think about specific things the more you talk about specific parts of, of, of your job and what you do, the more they're going to expand and the more people are going to ask you to do those. So it, it's, it's kind of, it's a natural thing. You know, you, you, you talk about those things and mm -hmm. more people say, Oh really? Tell me more. And then you, and then you tell them more and then you expand as to, you know, what gives you credibility and authority 
and why you're different and or better than anybody else. So the first part of what we do, we would go through those five, five statements. We would condense those to very, very short, punchy statements mm -hmm. that actually make people want to listen to you instead of, instead of, well, people being confused because that's the biggest mistake I, I, I see with people's mm -hmm. personal brands. They go into right. coming very technical. You've seen, you've seen it as well as I have. And that's a, that's a big problem. And really. if I may interject here, Nathaniel um, and, and Jason, y you are realizing yourself that you have a personal branding issue when people that comes to you are asking, um, I don't really get, you know, what are you doing? What, what, is, what is that you do, you know? Because if they come to you without knowing who you are and what you do, that means whatever you have taken in terms of actions prior to that moment was the wrong ones because they don't know what you're doing. They don't know what yeah. you're doing. This is probably because you don't know what you're exactly doing or what you're really yeah. passionate about because a five-year-old um, should know that. If you have kids, remember when you're at school, <laughs> the teacher is asking, hey, what mom and dad are doing? So sometimes yeah. uh, the mother, you know, the, 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 the kid says, hey, my mom is a nurse. And then my dad, uh, yeah, he's, he's playing with computer. Or he does this or that, or he's, me he's meeting people outside. He's always on the road. But I don't know exactly, you know, the kid is not saying, I don't know exactly what my dad or my mom is doing. Because actually, you, your personal branding is blurred. So, of course, yeah. you, you need to know what you're passionate about. But if you put that down with professional, help of professionals on paper, and then you stick to it. And we were saying that earlier with Nathaniel. It's all also about the agenda. Do you master your agenda or does the agenda master you? You just express the no, fact true. that, you know, for the, cl the closing engine, at some point, you would like to have a complete digital ecosystem that runs the, the mechanic behind the scenes. So you can move towards some more added value business processes. Is that your, 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 uh, your, uh, your objective, Jason, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, that means for you, your personal branding, your passion, and what you got to do the next step, the next stage, right? And you put a milestone, a flag in the middle of, uh, of the plane or half away on the mountain, say, when I'm going to reach that flag, I'm no longer the entrance guy saying, shaking hands here, here. I will have people to do that for me. I would have a, a system that would be organized with well um, oiled process. So I can look at the reports and it's sometimes from time to time I'm jumping in. So, hey, the bus is here. We're good. So people will value that, that opportunity and that time when we will be back <laughs> at the entrance door. Right. Yeah. Uh, but now uh, if you know where you're going and if you are dictating your agenda of what to do instead of jumping from an opportunity to a networking session or a five to seven. Right. This is where you are mastering your personal branding. Yeah. But it's, it's like a lion. A lion is a lion. I'm, I'm again with that metaphoresis, the lion. Uh, you don't <laughs> care. You know, you, you, you're just yourself. And, yeah, and, and, very true. Very and, true. But I think. Okay. But I we've think, hopped back think, into theory, though, guys. And I, I want to get away from theory. Right. We, well, we, what I was we going to say. Up, yeah, we ended up getting into a thing here like the hypnosis talking about or the hypnotist talking about if I was actually inducing a hypnotic state, this is what I would do or this is what would happen. I want to do a real like let's do one of those statements, just one of them. Sure. Right? So what do you Okay, do you and do? I want to use this example because I am not a bum. I am not a guy who is is confused. Uh, and I yet I still have issues with this, right? Hey, we it's, all do. Uh, it's, we you all know, do. I have a business. It works. I have yeah. six years of personal branding, and Nathaniel knows that, right? But yeah, it's well, still, that's I still have tons school. of people who don't know what I do or who I am. So and then there's a few people do? who, like, really intensely. So the, the, what, you yeah. Is, yeah, what, what you say, what you just stated is not related to the personal branding. It's related to the qualifying process of people entering your funnel. Um, if you go manual, right, uh, by uh, qualifying everybody, it's exhausting. It's really mm -hmm. exhausting. So you need to have some, 
service level agreement, I would say, in terms of business processes. Um, it's all, all about, um, you probably know what to ask for because you're a specialist with the closing engine, right? So if those uh, processes can be automated, you got also always, you will always have an audience, right? And uh, there are going to be always people jumping in a funnel. The thing is that you yeah. what you want to try to achieve and you're asking for um, not recipe, but can I have a roadmap with a, a plan with A, B, C, D? Don't get that too much long because I don't want to be confusing all the alphabet letters because there are 26. I don't want to go through 26 steps. Four steps, three steps would be uh, three to four steps would mm -hmm. be good. Uh, it's all about simp simplif um, simplifying your qualifying process with being very demanding for the prospect because we are shy. We don't want to hurt feelings about the people. Uh, Nathaniel sometimes seems to be arrogant, but he is not. Why? Because he's saying, I'm only working with ambitious people. So mm -hmm. don't mistake him when he's saying that. Ambition is someone with a plan. It's a grocery list, right? Then you have put like one, two, three things you want to purchase. And then That's true, but I don't, I don't understand. But wait a minute. I don't understand what Jason does. What do you do, Jason? <laughs> so with the closing engine, I run high-ticket sales teams for other coaches and trainers. Yes. So what would and be... We, we help them scale right, their on, business on, uh, Okay, hold on a minute. What would so be you the run high ticket. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you run high ticket sales teams for who? For other coaches and trainers. For other coaches and trainers. Okay. So first of all, high ticket, yeah, is not yep. particularly um, a warm way to explain what you do high ticket it turns people off certainly in europe does it it's okay. it's i think so yes i think it's kind of a crude americanism not being funny okay. but i'm half american so you know i i get it like it's a cultural difference that right. we have i know uh, you're, you're canadian right originally yeah but you live I in moved america to the us right? like so, 10 years ago sure right so 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 you so you've 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 taken the the high ticket um, words right, and you've put them into this statement. So first of okay. all, I, I, I want to take out um, high ticket right now. Okay. Let's take it out and let's just put it sure. somewhere else. Yeah. All right. I our our minimum you. you have to have a program that is priced at six thousand dollars minimum. Yeah, but that's but that's to, to but that's something. Well. Yeah, but, but, but Jason, if you want to get specific, that's something that you should discuss later. Like okay. that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's not, that's okay. not something that you, that you need to discuss right now with people and certainly not using the words high ticket. Right. Okay. Um, so, so basically you work, who do you work with? Coaches, trainers, and info product creators who have, a, right. Usually, it's a business finance program. Okay. Okay. Lead generation so, programs, and we okay. have European clients, which is interesting. So I'm I'm delighted to hear that feedback that the wording is okay. scary to them. Yeah. Well, it, it, yeah. It's not. I'm not saying it's scary. What I'm saying is exactly. Andy Steele, <laughs> high ticket is high flyer. Question mark. You see, he's English as well. Right. So, and there's a so, phrase you don't so, hear outside of the UK, right? High flyer. I know what it means yeah. because I watch Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister and Bernard there Woolley. You go. A high there you flyer. Go. So, right. so, so actually what, what you're doing is you're not, you're not, you're doing a lot of different things. So oh, yeah. there are going to be five statements that you're going to basically put together run sales for other coaches and trainers so so basically your your help you help people yeah you help i would say something like you help ambitious businesses to get the most out of their sales teams that's just something 
that well, I, that, we run that's... the sales teams. We hire them. We manage them. We track them. We coach them. Okay. Uh, so typically what's happened is a business owner, a coach, trainer, whatever, has gotten to maybe mm -hmm. around 400000 in revenue, busting their yep. butt and doing all the yep. sales themselves. And you know what happens okay. when you do all the sales and all the fulfillment yourself because we've all done it. It's crazy, yeah. right? Your yeah. schedule's packed yeah. wall to wall. Your your wife hates you, and yeah. <laughs> you don't see You're your stressed. family. Right? And you go, I've got to get out of this. And yeah. you want to yeah. scale. So yeah. we take that responsibility. They drive appointments to us, and mm -hmm. we close them. And that gives that business owner their time and energy back. Yeah, but you see, the word close in mm -hmm. itself is is for some people scary. not a very warm yeah. word either. And it is mm -hmm. quite scary. We all know we need to close. Yeah. Right. But actually I think engine. you could I think <laughs> well I think you I, I mean you've got the name of the business now. So changing it is potentially not something you want to do at this stage, but it could be something to look at in the future, right? It all depends it on the a, It hasn't been an issue. It's even been copied okay. by wannabe competitors, okay. which I find but, hilarious. But the thing is, is that you're not you're not actually closing. What you're doing is is you're helping people to buy. And there's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're 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 so for you and I to work together, we would need to spend probably it would probably take two two and a half days of 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 our time over mm -hmm. four weeks to to put together your wording for you then there's the wording for your business right mm -hmm. and they obviously feed off one another like this but actually it needs to represent your personality yeah and then so we start off with you know, what do you do? And then we look at those statements. Then we look at the what gives you authority and credibility. And then we look at the what makes you different and or better than anyone else. And then we look at the five words that represent you. So, yeah, Jason, Jason would benefit <laughs> from going through the personal branding exercises in the book. Most definitely. Yeah. And Nathaniel, and remember, we have um, an artificial intelligence server that is always, you know, helping uh, in the background because when we run um, uh, those modules over uh, a profile uh, that scans mm. whatever you are and whatever you do uh, regarding what it is digitally available, uh, it comes with six points uh, in pack of, of two. <laughs> so that's uh, twice three points. Um, the server... Uh, the AI server is always asking himself, or itself, should I say it, um, what are the top three benefits for uh, the customer? And, I like that. And, and what are the top three features? Why? Because if you're in an elevator, you don't have more time like, uh, you know, the three feet. Well, the thing is, it could be one, two, three, and then. Sure, you know, I know how to do an elevator pitch. I'm a yeah, sales, yeah. Right? But, 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 And I bought, I bought is, Nathaniel's book. Nat knows that the yeah, moment that it but, came out. I am not going to do the exercise on my own. I do not have time. So no, the best thing exactly. to do is to work with Nathaniel. And because he's going to give me the tips like high ticket is scary, right? For Europeans. Yes, it is. That, and, and, that stuff and, I can't duplicate and I can't get that out of a book. Unless he's exactly. written it down in there. <laughs> but, yeah. Exactly. And but also right. your your personal brand, it 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 will be twenty times, maybe twenty five times stronger than the business brand. They've mm. proved they've proved that 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 people warm towards people. People buy people, right? So if you if you can introduce yourself in a way that fits that person, yeah, because Say you went to speak in front of a certain type of, of, of uh, people. Say you went to speak in front of a bunch of pro salespeople, for example. Yeah. You would talk about yourself in a very different way as you would talk about yourself if they were a bunch of consultants or if they were a bunch sure. of trainers. I talk or about, I talk about of, them. Exactly. I wouldn't talk about but, me. But, yeah. But that's the point is that your yeah. five statements that actually reflect what you do would be targeted at those people. So you would mm -hmm. probably only pick one. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and, and that's the point is that 
It's actually having that document so that it's like, oh, I've got to do a press release this week. Hmm, okay, what am I going to use? Okay, this is a magazine about this, 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 and this. Right, okay, which right. statements are going to resonate with that audience more than anything else? And then you take the five statements or the three or whatever, and then you put them in there in a little bit of blurb. You add in a few extra words. And then that's and then that's the beauty. You've got your mm-hmm. you've got your blueprint, yeah. And it's it just makes communication so much simpler and easier right. to do. And I mean, I've been working with a very experienced lady. I was saying a bit earlier to Stefan, he, he knows her as well, and she's she's looking at doing something in her career, and she's managed to get some amazing meetings in the past few weeks just based upon the wording that we that we just did, you know, and. I think it's it's almost like like I don't do it for you, but what I will do is I'll help you to have a different perspective and bring right. in some new words that perhaps you might not have thought of using. You might you might not want to big up yourself if you know what I mean. You might not want to yeah, talk change. about you. <laughs> you know, I mean, some people are very frightened. Certainly, the British and 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 also I think the Canadians are a little bit softer in their approach. Whereas the Americans, they stand up and say, hey, look at me here. I'm the yeah. best. Kaboom. Doing this. <laughs> I'm awesome. Yeah. And, so <laughs> and exactly, I'm mostly on that side. Yeah. But there's nothing wrong with that. But then that can that can turn off the British right. market from your business. So if you're looking to expand right. your business into the UK, then you need to perhaps slightly tone it down. Yeah. yeah. For example, the... I'm a bit stuck on the on the run high ticket sales. We would need mm. we would need to talk about that in a different way. And you might find that that we put that in there. And, and uh, you know, I would personally just say something along the lines of that you you work with sales teams uh, or you 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 run outsourced sales teams for ambitious business people or something, yeah? But I would cut that down so that it said a lot, okay. much fewer words. Because I, I think the more words that you say, the more confusion there is for people. Yeah. Right. So I wanted people <laughs> to get a <laughs> sense of what it's like to work with you, Nat. Right. Well, it's great. And, and how it's much fun. how much work you have to do to to pick these niggling little words out. Right. It's not, well, it it's depends not just on... a, yeah, it's, it's not just a slam dunk. And I'm a person who, again, no. I've had many clients in, in the UK yeah. over the last yeah. six years, you know, this yeah. about their testimonials. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I do know how to tone it down, but still, even with, with all the uh, Kindle reports that I've got out there and, uh, you know, tripwire products, all the video stuff that you, you know, I do and, and Video is very effective for me. Very, it's still, yeah. it's still hard <laughs> to get the personal branding nailed down, and I can use yeah. Nat's help. It's it's obvious, right? And I wanted to demonstrate cool. this. Cool. I mean, I think with a lot of people, they make the mistake of actually changing it too regularly. So mm. they will, they will, they will just tinker around like it's like they're polishing their car or something. And, and it's like, do you know what? If you waste, if you've got time to do that, you're obviously doing it wrong because you should be doing more productive things and working with the right personal brand in the mm. first place. I mean, Andy here, he said he was surprised by the empathetic words his network used to describe him is what he mm. says. And and they did. They, it was amazing to watch. I watched him go through the process himself, and it was and it was it was fascinating. And he's and he's revamped his LinkedIn profile. And I I, I think pretty much anybody would talk to Andy on LinkedIn if if he if he sent them a message right, they would be like I don't care who they are. He they would talk to him. They really would. And 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 that's the test. The test is, can you if you use the right message to send to someone. Will they open it and will they respond? And that's right. a big, big test. That's I mean, for me, barrier. they don't always. They don't there's always for me. There's a lot of skepticism. Yeah. Well, there is. There, there's a lot right. of skepticism. I'm in a, a, a conservation um, platform. Conservation uh, community. Yeah. 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 Conservation community webinar we did uh, a week or so ago. Yeah, yeah, and he's, yeah, he's a very yeah. nice guy. <laughs> yeah. yet, yet again, and Andy, I think. Uh, um, uh, uh, has been more precise about his his wishes about the, mm-hmm. the conservation community platform. 
things need to be, need to be simple for people. So okay. if, if we take the branding of the platform, it would be create a fundraiser and find causes. So it's like left hand, right hand. It's, it has yeah. to be simple all the time if you want to have a personal branding or a brand, period. So he decided to do that. So that has been redesigned. It's going to be uh, released any, any next hours, right? That's going to be a surprise for the market and, and, and the charity and the audience. Um, but it's always come back down to the same. If, if you can name me one feature you do for a customer, and one benefit that the customer would would retrieve from from working with you, Jason, then those two answers will first help uh, Nathaniel to have like enlightenment, and he after he's gonna follow the lead, <laughs> right, mm -hmm, and yeah. find some other inspiration regarding the personal branding and all the details. But on the other side, it's gonna be very simple. The customers and the audience that are looking at that very moment, they would say, "Oh, Jason is." is going to bring me a benefit one and a feature A. So I can use the feature A any time of the week, and I'm going to benefit from Jason's help plus expertise, and I'm going to have that result. So those two points, they have value. You're saying the high, the high tickets is like $6,000. They will say it's only that because if those two yeah, things, yeah. some some people yes. for sure. them today, and they're helping them to achieve their objectives and goals tomorrow morning, then you are indis indispensable. They need you. And that is, I like, yeah. that's the sparkle of your, uh, of your, uh, yeah, the sparkle of your personal brand. Because uh, uh, before there was darkness and blur and confusion for the market. But since the day they got, I got this is going to be my benefit at the end of the day. And this is the feature I'm going to use every morning thinking about Jason. And if I need more, on the call. Uh, Jason, is there a second feature and a second, uh, a second benefit for me and a second tool? How do I use it? And, um, and then you can ask, what type of feature, what type of benefit you're asking? Then you engage the conversation, which is, in fact, the, 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 the petrol the the gas uh, the energy uh, that propel um, uh, the, the the closing engine because you're going to close they're going to close themselves yeah because that's the point is when you get it right because they, they have close to themselves energy. it's what like am you, buying? You, you, what am buying? so you're not even really closing because it's like well actually i'm not closing anything like i've just turned around to someone i said well i work with people who are like you they've they've had 20 years, you know, maybe 30 years experience or 20 years in, in, in business as, a, as an individual, as an executive. And they've, they've been doing something very successfully, but actually they, they, they've lost the, uh, the edge, the ability to explain what they do really simply. Uh -huh. And, 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 and that's, that's the challenge. It's, sure about creating benefit led led statements yeah but that that is part of the five what do you do yeah like it's the three things that are really the crucial points it's what do you do why are you uh why are you an authority and what gives you credibility which are the same things and what makes you different and or better than anyone else and it, you tie those things together and then you know, all right, we hear about the law of attraction and all this, yeah? I personally think the law of attraction is social media, yeah? You put content out there, it resonates with someone. You say the right words, and then they come to you, yeah? You know, I'm not talking about the law of attraction as in you sit down and think that the, that you're going to attract everything you want without doing anything. There's a big difference, right, which is unfortunate in this world. Well, even um, the, the founders of the law of attraction will tell you you need to take action. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> with yeah, it, with yeah. it, so, and it filters in. All this stuff. But you know, it, it, it's about putting the time in. And Dan, who's just about to join us, hopefully when he gets, uh, when I can see him, hopefully I see in a him. minute. I see him. Hey, Dan. Bearded. Hey. <laughs> Dan is an awesome individual. <laughs> 
Hey, Sadie, how you doing? <laughs> it's my lovely girlfriend there watching, ah. watching me look down over here when I should really be looking up there, but it's all a bit confusing for me. <laughs> so, Dan, we've, we've, we've known each other for nearly as, probably the same time as Jason and I, actually. So probably yeah. nearly five years, I would well, imagine. Meet you. Action creates traction, for sure. Andy's right. It's all a bit confusing, all these live broadcasts. So, so Dan... What do you think about the personal brand? Oh, we've done a number of um, interviews and chats before when we were on the old lab system before that went defunct and we spoke about personal branding. So I'd highly encourage you to go and look at those because I'm about to tell you the same thing. Um, for me, uh, it's about um, integrity, honesty, uh, transparency, and being who you are in in the public space as well as the private space. It's about not faking it, and it's about being consistent. As soon as you are not consistent, you will be found out. Hmm. Yeah. Can't argue with that. Can't argue yeah. with that. But you've done you've done a great job in building your personal brand, and you 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 you're carrying on doing it. You know, you you you're always out there taking pictures, doing the videos, showing what you're up to. You know, and it's 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 good. It's inspirational, I think, for people who who watch you. I think it's great. You're doing a great job. I haven't spoken to you for ages because you're out in Canada now, and you know, it's really great to see to see what you've been up to. It's just fantastic. Look, you're doing a good job. I've tried to get you out here, but apparently you don't like. Currently, it's minus forty Celsius. We're <laughs> at the moment. So apparently you're one of these people that searches out sun, whether it be in, uh, in Europe or South America. You came so close when you flew past, when you went to South America. I can't believe you didn't stop by and say hello. But <laughs> the most important thing from my point of view, when I talk about um, personal branding for me, I moved from a very big successful corporation um, in the United Kingdom doing work with global clients. And I've moved to... Um, the uh, west side of Canada, where I'm working in very specialist areas with um, science, tech, um, ag uh, agriculture, um, finance, investment, venture capitalists. And so I haven't changed in who I am. I'm still consistently me. But how I apply my skills and my specialism has changed. And in fact, I truly believe for a personal brand to grow, you should apply yourself into different areas. Because then it's not about, um, you know, there's this phrase, fake it till you make it. With, with what I've learned from moving 4,000 miles from where I was before to where I am, mm -hmm. I've been able to apply the skills that I had before and I've gained a whole bunch of new ones. So if there is one thing I would say to any professional, it's go and experience your professional and personal life somewhere else in the world. And, and just seeing the uh, post that's just popped up there, I've just come back from San Diego. Um, from the IABC, which is the International Association of Business Communicators. It was their leadership institute. And it was great to meet people from Microsoft, from um, LinkedIn and Facebook and uh, Cisco. Uh, who else? The Department of Defense for the American government and uh, Uber. And we're all in this one space. There's roughly 300 of us sharing ideas and, and learning about how we apply different tactics to the organization and also our own um, professional lives. And at the same time, I took the opportunity, whilst I was being uh, funded by IABC to go there, I went to Phoenix first and did a talk on um, crisis communications in the digital age. So I took those existing skills and I made the best value for their money as well. So I think if you can show people value and, and um, support a need, then people are gonna like you. I, I just want to be liked. There's nothing else in this world. <laughs> They love you, man. I bet they absolutely love you being it's out in, in LA. It's just, the it's just unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually need to say nothing intelligent. I just need to open my mouth. And I could work in Starbucks and I sound intelligent. <laughs> it's classic, man. So I'm, just try, I'm, I'm going to have to try and plug my, plug my laptop in because I just moved. And this is my new, this is my new venue for my Friday... Um, Friday afternoon, personal nice. branding. And uh, so, I, so I'm literally just, I might have to 
plug in and let you guys just uh, <laughs> have a chat. <laughs> As, as it disappears off. Now, the interesting thing is there is something called the IABC World Conference, which is coming up in uh, Quebec. And so I'm going to try and get over to that side of Canada because this country is cool. truly gargantuan in scale. And um, Nat, I'd encourage you to come over as well because yeah, honestly, you said. it's such a great opportunity for, firstly, for us all to meet and secondly, to, to, um, to connect with people who are very traditional communicators who sometimes need help modernizing and understanding yeah. their personal brands where maybe they've moved from a corporation they lose their own identity because they're no longer with that corporation with me i've always been working on me i mean it's not ego but it's ego it's not just <laughs> ego it's um the fact that i want to be able to pick up the phone and go hi i'm me and people go oh we've seen a video or you worked on this or you won an award for that whatever it is and so yeah. um, my, my, if I'm fulfilling needs out there and people go, hey, that's something that's slightly cool, then it's going to benefit me in the long run. Even if it's not now or next week, it might be in a couple of years. And that has actually happened today. I've just bumped into someone. Um, I'm at a talk with uh, McKinsey and bumped into someone I've never actually met face to face. And we were immediately on the right topic. Hmm. Very so, Dan, cool. when you say very marketing cool. communications, what does that mean? Oh, that's a very good, very good question. We got, we got sort of at it. You were talking a little bit about what you do earlier. You snuck it okay. in there very subtly, and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marcoms, for me, is quite a special space because where um, people work in the commercial space and they're selling advertising, they're purely, purely selling a product that's fully formed, that already knows its market, that already knows where it's positioned. And for me, uh, there's some incredibly talented specialist marketing people, people mm -hmm. who are dealing with the branding or looking at how uh, uh, the market research for a product before it's even made, um, looking at the process, how you're going to advocate internally, how you're going to bring people into a project to attract the talent to be able to work on it uh, and then feeding into once all the marketing piece is done how then the advertising and the sales side and the whole mechanism so i'm not that person so i fit in a mark on space and the mark on space for me is that i consult on behalf of um, my uh, organization here um, and I work in the magic space between those marketers, those specialist marketers and branding people and pure communicators. I fit into this kind of this area of convergence, which is mm -hmm. brilliantly using digital tools to, to, to connect traditional communications and outreach with improved listening, which is incredibly mm -hmm. important. And the listening tools mm -hmm. online are fabulous um and mm. so it's that space and then the marketing piece is helping communicators understand well it's not just about telling the story it's explaining you know how can we how can we actually look at the outcomes that we want to achieve and steering the storytelling to have a point and have an outcome and then you know if it pushes people into funnels all well and good okay so there's a bit of glue <laughs> I'm, I'm and, that and a bit of strategy. Connective tissue. Yeah. Hmm. And I would love to hear about a recent project that you've done and the and the outcome. And I know Stefan has a question. Hmm. Now this is really difficult because the things I'm working on since coming here. You might have NDAs. Yeah. Are mm -hmm. um, part private, public mm -hmm. projects. So. Mm. Um, it's not necessarily only the NDA. It's um, a piece I'm working on at the moment, which I'm going to skirt around, but kind sure. of tell you what I can. Um, okay. So it's working on um, in, an innovation. I've got to be so careful. Um, in the innovation space, and it's connecting um, people who work in um, traditional agriculture mm -hmm. and um, communicating with people in the um, ag bio sector, so okay. genetic engineering, and then connecting them with people who deal with analytics and data crunching and processing. Because if you can drive more efficiency into the ag agricultural mm -hmm. sector, then we're really going to help feed the world. So that's a piece that I'm working on, and it's, it's the communication between 
so many different stakeholders. So a big announcement went out yesterday um, with the, from the federal government here in Canada. And I had a small part to play in that um, over the last, you know, just under a year. And um, it's just got ramped up and ramped up and working with some incredibly talented people to be able to tell the story of the importance of plant-based proteins. Um, okay. And so I can't go into huge details, but effectively, um, yesterday a government was made from the mm. innovation minister. And um, they announced that this cluster is, has been um, fortunate to get a share of the $950 million Canadian dollars. Mm. So I've worked on this for quite a while, and the innovation newsroom before that, and we're trying to see how they can, how they can fit together to complement each other. Again, in that mid-space where it matters what the internal market is saying to each other with you know, a couple of hundred uh, interested parties mm. and then also the external advocacy so the outcome is at this stage on this project is that working with some incredibly talented people we've been successful in um, gaining the uh, portion of the 950 million Canadian dollars Wow that yeah. sounds great Dan yeah. it's amazing yeah. isn't it that you that you just can't talk about these projects like we have this as well you just you get involved with something and you sign the NDA and it's like, you, you, if you want to keep that relationship with the client, you can't, you can't say yeah. anything. It's like, well, see, and in his case, it's like, there's say there's like a public stock price, right? I can't, the CEO of that company can't go out and just say whatever he or she wants yeah. <laughs> because um, it'll drive the price up and down. And then and, now and, they and just, hurt just going themselves. on to a side story. That's yeah. a perfect example that um, there's frustration in certain parts of, of the marketplace. So here in Canada, there is, and this is no secret, there is a new legislation coming um, in June for the legalization of um, personal use of cannabis. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing is that hemp is here and cannabis is here. Yet at the moment, the legislation looks like it's steered that it's all categorized it as one thing. Now, mm. um, the commercial value of, per acre of uh, cannabis is significantly higher, roughly 10 times higher in cannabis rather than um, uh, hemp. But it's still an incredibly profit. Hemp is still an incredibly profitable um, uh, stock to have and the processing of it. So the storytelling in that sense comes, uh, how do we differentiate one mm. from the other, uh, one commodity from the other. And most importantly, how do you make sure that the legislation from one, which doesn't really fit the other, doesn't affect the other? So that's, I've, I've gone from working in FMCG, fashion and luxury, um, sports marketing, to dealing with mm. <laughs> hemp and cannabis, which is, um, it's fascinating. It doesn't actually matter what we're doing. Mm. But they're all incredibly interesting projects, but the NDA side of it, I mean, there's a frustration when you're um, an agency or an independent contractor and you can't say, hey, we've worked with this organization. Now, some right. organizations are very good in that they'll say to you, hey, you know, um, you can say that we, you worked with us, but don't say what it was. So like a logo, you know, our clients page on your website and you've got company, 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 company. Now, the problem comes that many companies won't let you do that unless they're um, really cool with it. And if you do it, yeah. regardless of asking them with the bigger companies, they can get really arsy. And then if you go into mm -hmm. the scope of a case study without getting permission, you can get completely stuffed. Right. So um, it's it's interesting when, you, when you've got to be cagey about what you say, but you want to attract new business. Mm -hmm. It can yeah. be difficult. Yeah. I think, I think if you're careful with how you put it, you can talk around it, can't you? Like I was saying. Completely. But, but so so in terms of in terms of like um, personal branding with with big corporates, right? Like you and I, we used to talk about this a lot and how and how they used to just push out all this corporate propaganda. And unfortunately, they're still doing it and they don't really realize that actually if if those people built strong relationships with an audience, then that audience mm -hmm. would be more interested in what they had to say. So it's kind yeah. of quite funny, right? I, I find the whole thing quite amusing to just watch, just to see. But obviously there yeah. are there are a lot of businesses that are doing it right. They do, they do, you know, put together the wording and 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 they do build the relationships. But it's it's not easy, right? I think that one of the things that you have to say and one of the things that you can really admire is a corporation who has 
corporate values, corporate language, who allow the individuals within the organization to be their own personalities. And just saying, look, here are our guidelines, respect mm. them, don't bring us into disrepute, but go and advocate on your behalf. Uh, employee advocacy is significantly more effective than paying for an ad, mm -hmm. significantly. Uh, one of the people at the conversation was um, from, oh, I can't remember the corporation's name, um, but they're um, uh, d uh, Digital Signals, dig sin, sin, dig I can't remember. Um, it's in my bag. Um, but they were saying that sometimes uh, the employees have pushed the line a bit and they just correct them slightly. But as long as they don't give any IP away or breach any uh, privacy agreements, they're fairly free with it. And for me, um, I've, I've worked with companies that have said, well, we want the messaging to be about the company and not about the individual because we don't want to make a star or a celebrity of someone who could leave us. Well, here we go. Treat them well enough, they'll stay, and they'll then become incredibly known for what they yeah. do and be associated with you. Give them a condition that they don't want mm -hmm. to leave you. That's a big exactly. key. Exactly. And then they become an advocate, don't they, of, of the business, yeah? Yeah. 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 What's fun for you, Dan? Tell us What's a little fun bit about for me? fun. Yeah. In terms of work? Project, yeah. challenge, family. Yeah. Work. I think this would really benefit our, our viewers, our listeners. Okay. Yeah, the reason, the, reason, the reason he's asked you that is because it's, it's all about doing something that you love to do, right? Okay. And bringing that passion into, yeah. into so, the work. Yeah. So that's true. And there's three circles. You've got, if you had a triangle with three, three, mm -hmm. three corners, you've got the, um, I'm really good at my job, but don't like it. I really like doing this job, but don't get paid for it. Or mm. I really like this job and I get paid for it. And it's trying to get everything down to that corner down there. Right. Um, for me, I've in, I'm, you know, my background, I started in IT. I wanted to go into the theater. I ended up going into radio after I said, I've had enough of IT. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate all the, the way of thinking and the processes that working in IT gives you real problem solving. And I apply that to what I do in comps. But I never had originally the, the passion in, in IT or electronics. So when I went into radio, I suddenly realized the ability to listen to people and to tell their stories is a real thing that I love. Hmm. So the, the space for me is I started, I started at the beginning of last year producing a um, personal video diary. And okay. Part of it is for me to be able to go, hey, this is me, you can get to know me. It keeps my skills polished in production. Uh, it makes sure that I'm always aware of the stories that are happening, happening around me. And it means that when I go to clients, because they're public, clients know what's, what, what's going on in my life and in my world. Yeah, yeah. So, Very um, cool. Good point. That I really enjoy. I also I started a podcast a couple of years ago called Cafe Soco, Soco, which is about social media and content marketing, um, in which I've interviewed people from Australia, New Zealand, America, uh, the UK, Canada. Uh, now we will get to our one, but the problem is we answered everything when we did your <laughs> recordings, so I might just copy them. Um, yeah, you can if you want, actually. Oh, you just download them, right? And, the, <laughs> and the, the piece about that is I've now been able to go into clients and say, hey, you know, this is a, this is a podcast that's produced work people have it's been revenue generating because mm -hmm. they've seen what we talk about and how we think demonstrating how we think but i my passion is the really simple production the turnaround it's like make it top it tail it put it out that's it the simplicity mm -hmm. productions can be so simple people over oh, they can take forever can't they as well so do you yeah. do you actually um edit the sound at all or do you just literally just top it and tail it and put it out the door like what do you do exactly <laughs> so i don't like the way my voice sounds i find it squealy <laughs> and slightly irritating so <laughs> what i do is when i record the podcasts um, yeah. so everyone can go out and get a usb mic i think i did you get a blue yeti i can't remember you went i've got, got it right here i've got it okay. right here yeah so it's very easy to go and get a Blue Yeti, and they've got limited tonal controls on them. Uh, Where is how it? How messy there. is that desk? <laughs> I've just moved. I've just literally. <laughs> this is not. I'm just oh, that's messy as it needs to be. 
<laughs> um, I so literally just I, see mine. <laughs> I could have gone and got the Blue Yeti, but I, I don't like the tonal control. So what I've got is ah. a small mixer. I've got, um, I, I actually have XLR microphones, and I chose the microphones based on the environments in which I was probably going to record. So I didn't go for condenser mics because they pick up a lot of Atmos, the sound from the room and the bounce back. I actually mm. went for standard stick mics or, um, you know, cardioid mics because they pick up a very directional sound. And then I tonally control them. And so... Um, sometimes I record on a phone and separately on an audio recorder and then do clap sync so I can right. then bring them together on the timeline. No. But truly, unless there's something that's said that's absolutely wrong, um, they're, they're, you know, I might play with the sound just to get the tone right, um, but everything else is just as is. The truth cool. is, if you want to cool. be authentic, you should be allowed to make a mistake. You just put it out there, right? Right there. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why I'm sort of looking down here at the moment because I'm not set up properly. You know, it's weird. You guys are looking at me, and I'm looking up. I'm looking know, down here. It's. Do you know what, Nat? You've got a lovely ear. That's all I can thanks. say. <laughs> it's great. No, I had a really good shot taken of me the other day by a really great um, photographer, and yeah. and we went out and f I was freezing. We went out to depict my epiphany can we, story. Can we just that define I had. freezing, please? Quick. Okay, it wasn't that cold. It was cold enough for me to be very cold. Thank you. I had a haircut, <laughs> and we, we 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 went out, and I was I was really cold. And he took all these pictures, and then I got back, and my girlfriend was like, "No, no, I don't like that one. He wants to use." And I was like, "Sorry, you can't use it." <laughs> and it's just, and so it was like this. It was something like it was like what was it? It was like it was like that. Mm. And it, and I and I I didn't like it either. To be fair. But it but right. it depicted it depicted something and it's yeah. it's fascinating how images, um, actual pictures and videos will 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 build your personal brand or damage it right I mean like you can damage your personal brand really quickly if you if you put the wrong content out there right and uh, it's fascinating you know who you engage with who you spend time with how they engage with other people it all adds up doesn't it yeah you know? it's it's very easy to be dragged into someone else's crisis mm -hmm. um, and part of media training yesterday i gave media training uh, with a colleague mm -hmm. of mine and we we did a bunch of recordings and running scenarios and the such like and um it was interesting. One of the uh, one of these examples. So you take United Airlines when the guy was dragged off by his face, um, and then <laughs> the other stories that dragged into it: the dead bunny rabbit, the giant bunny rabbit that died, and the guy's guitar that got smashed. And then the story moved. It evolved. It said, "Okay, well, what about people that get bumped by airlines?" And suddenly, it turned out that Delta is number one for bumping people from airlines. And Delta has got a story to answer. So you can draw direct parallels with that because Delta are associated with United purely through being in the same industry. If I did a video with someone who turned out to be, um, you know, someone that's, um, you know, been accused of sexual assaults, I want to, you know, I can be um, judged if there's a lot of content around that. I can be judged that, well, how close am I with this person? The yeah, person very much. Did be I know about it? Was I... Was yeah. I someone that turned a blind eye? So yeah. uh, thankfully that hasn't happened. It's not a situation that's real. But thankfully. those are the sorts of things when, when you look at personal branding, what looking who's in your tribe matters very importantly. I mean, very Matt much. and I, when we first met, there were other people within our tribe who um, weren't exactly the right fit. And so just yeah. through natural degradation, they disappeared off into off. Yeah, a different part off. of the world but you make sure that you don't actually follow up and and try and re-engage with them because you can yeah. just see um okay they're a nice they these people may be nice enough people but could they be potentially damaging to your positioning and that's the question when we're looking at personal branding you've got to take that yeah. into account also offensive t-shirts i went to a business meeting last year someone had a really offensive t-shirt about a whole section of society. It's like, how tone deaf can you be that you just didn't get it? If you don't understand it, then you probably shouldn't be in my network. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is it, isn't it? I mean, I think we need to be very, very careful who we associate ourselves with, you know. And I'm very fortunate. I've kind of, it's kind of just, yeah, I think the natural selection process of what you were saying yeah. is, is totally right. 
you know and the more the more the older we get you know we notice who's a waste of time who's who's got ambition who hasn't got ambition and who we want to work with and it's like if 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 they don't do what they say they're going to do and you can't talk to them on a level where yeah. there's no ego like it's just it, the whole thing just damages your personal brand and I, it's going to think- take ages to recover from as well potentially there's something to add on to that as well, which is as you get older, you'll put up with when you're younger, you'll put up with people who might be trying to fake it until they make it. And you'll go, OK, well, they're going to get somewhere. They're going to get somewhere. When you're older, yeah. you've just got this test which goes, no, they're just talking crap and I don't need them in my life. And I've got to a certain stage that I don't need that muck flying off in mm. my direction. And you tend to get yeah. rid of people a lot quicker. And and. Yeah. I think that we're, it's not that we're more forgiving when we're younger. I think it's that we've got a greater tolerance to, okay, so you're wanting to get somewhere. I'm going to support you, but you, you just need to be authentic. And if, you're, if your authenticity scale is somewhere from bullshit to horseshit, then, you know, it's not in a good place. <laughs> I agree completely. So are you available to come and do another one of these broadcasts, Dan, in a few weeks' time? Because we'd love to have you back on, you know. We'll yeah, come up with we'll come up with some really useful things to talk about. I know you're big into content creation and stuff, mm-hmm. and it's it's fascinating to actually think about the kind of content you can put out there for people. <clears throat> it's so much fun, you know. It really is. Yeah. And here's Stefan, who I think you've just met, hopefully, <laughs> briefly. <Hi. laughs> Yeah, yes. I, I I left the room back as uh, Jason has, has a lot of questions and some and good interaction, but uh, you know I had my question of my own, right? And I do really agree with you about you know those. I don't know how we call them, sad people maybe sometimes, and but they should be happier, you know, find find happiness uh, about being authentic because if they fake to be, they will fail to be. <laughs> yeah. It- it's simple, yeah. really. And, and I do agree with you. When we are over sometimes 50 and something, we go, all right, uh, no time to lose time, right? <laughs> like, let's go to the essential. Let's be authentic. It. It's not about thinking being authentic. It's just be. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to take a guitar and start to sing uh, the Beatles song, let it be, let it be, let it be. But that's the point, right? Yeah. And I had a no, question. No, I heard, heard you. True. Mm-hmm. I heard you sooner talking about coming to Quebec for for that for that uh, event, and w- when would that be? Uh, spring. Uh, World conference is in June. June, and is that Montreal? Yes. Is that Place Bonaventure or some place? I think like so. I can I can send the links. Basically, if you go onto I, just search for IABC World. Yeah, conference. that will be the, the fantastic uh, opportunity to socialize, and if it's June. Maybe we will have our half Brit, half American Nathaniel Siskula with us, right, Nate? You never know. I'm trying to go on a well, road trip for a few weeks, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and well, do that. Do you know, so that would be in proud. fairness, we've got no snow at that time of year, so you shouldn't be afraid of coming north of America. Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I am. Well, my uncle lives in Canada. My uncle lives in Montreal as well. Same as Stefan. Yes, mm-hmm. and uh, and a couple of clients too. You know? So you so you cool. own it. You owe it to your family. I owe it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, it's been a joy. Yeah. It's been uh, a joy, you know man. What? It's it's always a pleasure. I'm here at um, Innovation Place. We've been um, having a wonderful conference today, talking about the super. To, we've been discussing the supercasters and to finish off my morning and morning coffee in about oh, three minutes time um, cool. has been really really awesome so I thank you for inviting me on this and awesome. um, I do encourage people to reach out to me because it's a, it's a real pleasure to connect people through this network as well Thanks Dan it's always a joy to see you and thanks so much Jason for, for, for uh, helping with the broadcast as well you add a lot of value you know Ingrid says, this is live. <laughs> and if, 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 and if, anyone, if anyone wants to contact me, message me on Facebook or email me nat at natschooler.com. Just rebuilding my website again. <laughs> right. Yeah, long story. 
<laughs> are, are, you uh, also, the, um, ABM, are, are you guys going to do the ABM SAS webinar on uh, on Thursdays? I, I think Is so. Is that going on? I think okay. so. I think anybody who's interested in uh, in the tech that Stefan was talking about should uh, should attend that. And yeah, we got some great marketing technology maybe. that we're bringing out. Yeah, just just to interject because <laughs> I don't have much else to say, Dan. I, I um, actually, I'm yeah, a tiring week. Here's me, here's me saying, you know what, it'd be great for people to get in touch, and I haven't really said how. So basically, if you look at any social media and just look for, um, uh, just just search for Dan Gold Media, because there's a lot of Dan Golds out there, and I'm certainly not the tattoo artist in the UK. Um, no, you're not. So, but Dan's, he's a lovely guy. He tattooed my best friend. Um, <laughs> how nice. Just, just search for Dan Gold Media. Um, there's a website, there's links to everything, and um, it's a real honor to connect with people. So tap me up. Awesome. And yeah, and if you're still watching this video, please share it, like it, and comment. Yeah, no Always problem. forget that. I need to say that more. <laughs> Thanks, Stefan, for hosting. Course, really appreciate it. The comment you have uh, Dan Gold's uh, 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 Facebook page, I think, personal one, and as well as his uh, AABC one as well uh, so it's it's all about re watching the replay and then if you want to get in contact with dan no problem he is a nice guy authentic one <laughs> <laughs> he loves the snow like any canadians well you're not a canadian you're a brit abroad that's your personal subtitle for the personal writing. that's the one the brit abroad <laughs> <laughs> classic <laughs> i'll see you soon dan <laughs> Take care. Thank you, Nancy, and Daniel, for being with us uh, today. We're going to wrap up. And, of course, no problem. We're going to start again the account based marketing strategy web service uh, webinar so people get more to know what technology can do for them. And uh, they're going to be a new launch of a technology called Geodata Server, which is, in fact, um, um, an AI server on steroids with live market intelligence. Any big data can be brought to visualization and you can do your decision making after live. Thank Dan you guys. Dan is uh, loving, loving that. <laughs> I can see his face. <laughs> oh, classic. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly I feel really unintelligent. <laughs> <laughs>